Welcome to Children's Liturgy of the Word at Blessed Sacrament. My name is Mrs. Cathcart, and I'm so glad you're joining me today. Jesus says that whenever two or three are gathered together in his name, he is there with them. So when you and I gather together online in this way for Children's Liturgy of the Word, Jesus is with us. Last week, we began a new church year with the first Sunday of Advent. Advent is a short liturgical season, only four weeks long. Today is the second Sunday of Advent. Did you notice the color of the banner on the right side of your screen? Right, it's purple. Purple is the main color for the season of Advent. Inside church, you'll see purple in Father's vestments, the altar cloth, the cloth over the ambo where the readings are proclaimed, and other places too. Next week, look out for the pink or rose liturgical color in church. Next weekend is one of only two times during the whole church year when you'll see it. We celebrate the midpoint of Advent and Lent with the color rose to represent joy. Let's light our first and second Advent candles as we begin our celebration of the Liturgy of the Word on the second Sunday of Advent. Candles remind us that Jesus is the light of the world. This week's opening song is Faith from VBS Everest. Stand up and sing along. The next part of our liturgy is a prayer called the Collect, so please bow your heads in prayer. 
we begin as we begin all things. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, we pray that we will continue to grow in understanding and love. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for the first reading. Today's first reading comes from the book of the prophet Isaiah in the Old Testament. In it, Isaiah tells God's people how they will be able to see God. Listen now as Nika reads from God's Word. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. A voice is shouting, Clear a path in the desert for the Lord. Build a straight road there for our God. Fill in the valleys and flatten the mountains and hills. Level the rough and rugged ground. Then the glory of the Lord will, will appear for all to see. The Lord has promised this. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God. Now it's time to sing. We're going to sing some of Psalm 85 to the tune of Row, Row, Row Your Boat. I'll sing it once, and then you can join in for two more times. Ready? Lord, show us your love, your mercy, and your love. Bring us to heaven to live with you in mercy and in love. Now join me. Lord, show us your love, your mercy, and your love. Bring us to heaven to live with you in mercy and in love. One more time. Lord, show us your love, your mercy, and your love. Bring us to heaven to live with you in mercy and in love. Great job. Now it's time for the Alleluia as we get ready to hear the gospel. Please stand and sing along with Kristen and Steve. it's time for the gospel. The gospels are the four books of the Bible that tell about the time when Jesus was alive on earth. In today's gospel, we'll hear about Jesus's cousin John as he tells people to get ready for the coming of Jesus. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. The beginning of the holy gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Let's put Jesus in our thoughts, Jesus in our words, and Jesus in our hearts. This is the good news about Jesus Christ, the Son of God. It began just as God had said in the book written by Isaiah the prophet. I am sending my messenger to get the way ready for you. In the desert, someone is shouting, get the road ready for the Lord, make a straight path for him. So John the Baptist showed up in the desert and told everyone, Turn back to God and be baptized, then your sins will be forgiven. From all Judea and from Jerusalem, crowds of people went to John. They told how sorry they were for their sins, and he baptized them in the Jordan River. John wore clothes made of camel's hair. He had a leather strap around his waist and ate grasshoppers and wild honey. John also told the people, Someone more powerful is going to come and I am not good enough even to stoop down and untie his sandals. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Today's Gospel reading comes from the very beginning of the Gospel of Mark. 
In the Bible, there are four Gospels, the books of the Bible that tell about when Jesus was here on earth. The Gospels of Luke and Matthew begin with Jesus as a baby, while the Gospels of Mark and John begin when Jesus was an adult, about to start his time of teaching about God's kingdom and healing and caring for the poor. The main character in today's Gospel reading is a guy called John the Baptist. John was Jesus' older cousin, born just a few months before Jesus was born. His mother was Mary's cousin Elizabeth, and his father was a Jewish priest named Zechariah. The Gospel of Luke tells us that before John was born, his parents were starting to get old, and they were worried they would never be able to have children. When Elizabeth became pregnant with John, she knew he was the miracle they had hoped for. The first time she felt him move was when Mary, pregnant with Jesus, came to visit her favorite cousin Elizabeth in Jerusalem. The Gospel says John didn't just move a little bit, he leaped in her womb when he felt Jesus was near. Every year on May 31st, we celebrate this special moment with Mary and Elizabeth and the unborn Jesus and John, called the Feast of the Visitation. The Bible doesn't tell us about Jesus and John when they were young. Although they lived a four days journey away from each other, Jesus in Nazareth and John in Jerusalem, I like to imagine they would have found a way to visit with each other every couple of years. Do you have a cousin that you don't see very often, but when you do see him, it's like you just saw him yesterday? I imagine Jesus and John like that. Jesus, what have you been up to, man? How's Aunt Mary? Is Uncle Joseph still teaching you in the carpentry shop? John, how's school going? What's Uncle Zechariah doing these days? Did Aunt Elizabeth send me any of those delicious rolls she bakes with honey and cinnamon? I like to imagine that they each knew the other was going to do something really special, but that they might not have known exactly what that special thing would be quite yet. Later, when Jesus and John were grown up, around 30 years old, God called John to be a prophet, a person who delivers God's messages and teachings to the people. Today's Gospel reading tells us that John was preaching God's message out in the desert, wearing clothes made from itchy camel's hair, eating grasshoppers and wild honey. As the son of Zechariah, one of the Jewish high priests, John would have been used to living in a nice home with comfortable clothes and good food. Like many of the Old Testament prophets, John left a comfortable life and went out to teach the people. And many of those people didn't want to hear what John had to tell them. John told the people to turn back to God and stop sinning. As a sign of that return to God, and as a starting point for a new life, he told them they needed to be baptized. He waded out into the Jordan River with them and dunked them in the water, washing away their sins. John's followers thought he was the most awesome, amazing thing they'd ever seen. But then, John told them the real reason for what he was doing. He said, you think I'm great? Someone even more amazing, more powerful, more awesome is coming. He said this new person was so incredible that John wasn't even good enough to untie his sandals. He said, you think baptism with water is great? This new person will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. He was getting them ready for the coming of someone amazing, someone who would change their world in ways they couldn't imagine. Guess who he was talking about? His cousin Jesus, of course. The season of Advent, the four weeks that lead up to Christmas, is a time of getting ourselves ready for Jesus. We prepare for his birthday celebration on December 25th, of course. Maybe, though, we also need to prepare our hearts for Jesus in a special way, turning away from sin and back to God as John preached, caring for people in need, and sharing the love of Jesus. We might make plans to gather with our family and friends, maybe virtually this year. We might send Christmas greetings to faraway friends. We might decorate our homes and choose gifts to give to our loved ones. But we can also pray together around our Advent wreaths, choose a gift or two for someone in need, share a plate of cookies with a lonely neighbor, or bring peace to our homes by being kind to our brothers and sisters. What are you doing to prepare for Jesus this year? The next part of our liturgy is the profession of faith, when we say what we believe about God in our church. 
After each question, you respond, I do believe. It's okay to get excited because God is exciting. Do you believe that God made our earth and everything that lives here? I do believe. Do you believe that Jesus came to earth to love and save us? I do believe. Do you believe that God sent the Holy Spirit to help us live a good life? I do believe. Do you believe our church tries to help us live the best life we can? I do believe. Do you look forward to seeing God in heaven one day? I do believe. The next part of our liturgy is the prayers of the faithful. There are many ways to pray to God, to praise him, to thank him, to tell him we're sorry, or to tell him our needs. The prayers of the faithful are when we ask God for what we need. I'll say a prayer that ends with, we pray to the Lord, and you respond, Lord, hear our prayer. Then I'll pray for all the prayers we hold in our hearts. And if you have a prayer you would like to say, you can say it then. And we'll all respond, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for all the children joining us for Children's Liturgy of the Word today. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for all the people who are sick or hurt today. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray that you will help us to become giving and helpful like your son Jesus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray that you will help us to have faith in you, even when things are hard. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the prayers we hold in our hearts. Say your own prayers now. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Thank you for joining us for Children's Liturgy of the Word today. Come back next time for another session. Have a great week and share the love of Jesus. Bye.